What is a demographic model, you say? Well, we will tell you all about it. The demographic transition model is a process with several stages, and every country is in one of them. The process has a beginning, middle, and end. Once a country moves from one stage to another, they are not able to revert to an earlier stage. There are three words you may need to know during this video. The first is crude birth rate. Crude birth rate, also known as CBR, is the total number of live births in a year for every 1,000 people alive in the society. A crude birth rate of 20 means that for every 1,000 people in a country, 20 babies are born over a one-year period. The second is crude death rate, also known as CDR. This is the total number of deaths in a year for every 1,000 people alive in the society. This is comparable to the crude birth rate. The crude death rate is expressed as the annual number of deaths per 1,000 population. The third is the natural increase rate, also known as NIR. This is the percentage by which a population grows in a year. It is computed by subtracting the CBR from the CDR. After first converting the two measures from numbers per 1,000 to percentages, thus if the CBR is 20 and the CDR is 5, then the NIR is 15 per 1,000, or 1.5%. 1 the term natural means that a country's growth rate excludes migration. There are four stages to the demographic transition model. They are stage one, low growth, stage two, high growth, stage three, moderate growth, and stage four, low growth. Most of humanity's time has been spent in stage one. Stage one includes crude birth and death rates, which vary considerably from year to year. Over time, however, the natural increase was essentially zero and population remained unchanged. During this stage, people depend on hunting and gathering for food. Around 8,000 BC, the population began to grow rapidly. From 8,000 BC to 1750 AD, the population grew from 5 million to over 800 million. The rapid population growth is due to the agriculture revolution. The agriculture revolution is the time when human beings first domesticated plants and animals and no longer relied on hunting and gathering for food. By growing plants and raising animals, humans created a more stable and larger food source of food. Due to this, more people were able to survive. Human populations still stayed in, stayed in stage one after the agriculture revolution because food supplies were still unpredictable. Farmers prospered in regions with abundant harvests, and the population expanded, but when under unfavorable conditions arose, low food production occurred. War and disease also caused us to remain in stage one. No country remains in stage one. Every nation has moved on to at least stage two. The book provides the example of England in its beginning stages. During the year 1066, the Normans invaded England, and the country's population was about 1 million. 700 years later, the population was only 6 million. The English population rose and fell during these 700 years. One cause of the population to fall was the Black Death. During the 1740s, the crude death rate skyrocketed following a series of bad harvests, leading to little food sources for the people of England. The next stage is stage two. During this stage, there is a high growth in the population. Also during this stage, the crude death rate decreases and the crude birth rate remains the same. More developed countries entered this stage after 1750, resulting from the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution, the agriculture production increased. This caused new farming equipment to be produced and people could now work in factories. The steam engine, mass production, and power transportation all helped to contribute to this stage. Wealth also caused increased sanitation, hygiene, sewer systems, and protection from contamination. During the Industrial Revolution, the population increased by 1.7% each year in these better developed countries. The lower developed countries, such as Africa, Asia, and Latin America, entered stage 2 due to the medical revolution. The medical revolution eliminated the chance of traditional deaths. Vaccines got rid of diseases that previously were fatal. England entered stage two in 1750 and left during 1880. During this time, the birth rate remained high, but the death rate plummeted. These changes marked the start of the industrial revolution in England. Due to new production techniques, the nation's food supply increased and generated money that was spent on improvements to public health population rose from 6 million to 300 million in England, and this is an average increase of 1.4% each year. The next stage is stage 3. During this stage, there was moderate growth of population. 
Countries move from stage 2 to stage 3 when the crude birth rate begins to drop sharply. They continue to fall in stage 3, but at a much slower rate. Population continues to grow because birth rate is still greater than the death rate. More modest, however, because the gaps narrows during this period. European and North American countries generally moved from stage 2 to stage 3 during the first half of the 20th century. Most countries in Asia and Latin America have moved to stage 3. However, most African countries remain in stage 2. During stage 3, the birth rate changes due to changes in social customs. A society enters stage 3 when people choose to have fewer children. This is partly a reaction to the lessening of infant mortality. People are more likely to live in cities during stage 3 rather than in the countryside. This leads to smaller homes, which means less room for children and large families. Citizens are also more likely to work in offices, shops, or factories rather than on farms during this stage. When England entered stage 3, their crude birth and death rates changed little. The birth rate was equal to 33 per 1,000 children, and the death rate was equal to 19 per 1,000. Population increased from 26 million to 49 million during this time. This is an increase of 0.7% each year. The next stage is stage 4. During this stage, there is low growth in the population. Countries enter stage 4 when the crude birth rate declines to where it equals the crude death rate. The natural increase equals zero. This means that there is zero population growth. Social customs explain the movement. This is because women start to enter the workforce and take birth control to have fewer children to also have more time for other activities. Some countries have negative natural increases, which means the number of deaths exceeds the number of births. England entered stage four due to communist rule. Higher deaths and not enough pollution control caused this. During this time, the crude birth rate was equal to 12 to 14 per every 1,000, and the crude death rate was equal to 10 to 12 per every 1,000. More women were entering the childbearing years, and the population continued to grow by 3 million because of immigration. I know we have talked for the last seven minutes about the falling birth rate. After all of this, you may be wondering what happens if the birth rate continues to fall. Well, I have an answer for you. Human geographers hypothesize there will be a fifth stage added to the demographic transition model in the near future. This stage will occur when the crude death rate surpasses the crude birth rate. This causes a loss to the overall population and thus a negative natural increase rate. The negative natural increase rate is not an immediate effect, however. Based on demographic momentum, it will take a generation or two before a negative population growth rate is observed. Human geographers are uncertain as to if people are persuaded by the high cost of raising a family in cities or the enticing opportunities of employment to delay childbearing. What they do know is that whatever it is, is causing the crude birth rate to fall well below the replacement level in some countries. One of the most infamous acts associated with population planning is China's one-child policy. Since its implementation in 1979, China has not only witnessed a decline in birth rate, but also a real demographic challenge, a gender imbalance, which is likely to lower the birth rate even further in the future. These social and political elements are not factored into the DTM, equation, but both have consequential impacts on total population. In recent years, a few countries, primarily in Eastern and Southern Europe, have reached a negative rate of natural increase as their death rates are higher than their birth rates. Possible examples of stage 5 countries are Croatia, Estonia, Germany, Greece, Japan, Portugal, and Ukraine. I hope during the last few minutes you have learned something about the demographic transition model. Thanks for listening. Created using Powtoon.